can't vote for none of them. All right. <laughs> I'm going to start first by giving all praises and glories unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Amarkakwadash. Double honor to the elder apostles at Great Millstone who rule well. And greetings, salutations, and blessings unto the hopeful elect. Shalom unto you. This is just a response, uh, quick response anyway, to the video the brothers did in Dallas, you know, um, to their live camp. But it was actually a, a response that they had done talking about this, this devil Esau. Right, he's ready to come down with the sword, and uh, I'm just gonna um, concur with that sentiment, man. This devil is ready, man. He's ready to come down with great wrath upon you, Jakes, man. Uh, among the people, he don't like the fact that he can feel his empire crumbling and, and falling through his fingers. All right, so now he's gonna do whatever he can, and, and what does he know how to do? He's the son of perdition, so he don't know how to do nothing else. Okay. Let me go real quick to Second Timothy, uh, Second Thessalonians, real quick, chapter two. Then I'm gonna jump to uh, another topic. Um, basically, it says Second uh, Second Thessalonians, chapter two, verse one. Or excuse me, verse three. It says, "Let no man deceive you by any means." And this man is a deceiver. He's an accuser, right? He's the devil. The Bible speaks of. It says, "For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And that's who this man is. As much, this man claims to be a Christian. This man claims to be love everybody and whatever else. But all he knows to show you, you can't always go by what somebody says, man. You got to go by their actions because they'll say whatever, but their actions prove what they really do. Okay? And what does the so-called white man really do? Who, who is biblically known as the Edomites, the Esau? He shows you destruction, man. He tries to kill you. This man in this particular video literally pulled a, his sword out, his gun. Brothers holding Bibles, he pulled out his gun. They cut him so hard with the scriptures, he said he want to blow their fucking heads off. Okay, why? Because like the brother read in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, that this sword cuts deep, man. And they don't want to accept their faith that, that they're the wicked of the Bible. They have, and you go into the Bible, matter of fact, I'm going to go to that right quick. And then I go to my other uh, part, main part of the lesson, um, which is a current event topic that's been going on. Let me pull this as Edom real quick. Bear with me one sec. I don't have a lot of time, but uh, I do want to touch all of these topics real quick. Edom is in a compact Zonovan's compact Bible dictionary. This is your own words. Edomites wrote this. All right, it says. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from the Most High God, Yahweh. Okay? So the Most High ain't giving you no mercy. Why? Because you don't deserve mercy. Because you've done nothing to deserve mercy. He said, when he goes, and I think the brother in the video read it, um, Ezekiel the 35th chapter because you pursued the, the children of Israel with the sword and, and for their blood blood is going to pursue you okay you're going to cut off everything that, that, that has to do with you and your people alright which, which which brings the topic of uh, John 3.16 okay this man quoted John he said well if you know the scriptures tell me what you know man went straight to John 3.16 it's funny as a lot of you Edomites Claim to know the Bible, your Christians and all that. The go-to scriptures, especially you everyday Joe Blow uh, crackers, six-pack crackers, man. Y'all drink six-pack on the weekend and shit like that, man. Go to the gun range, shit like that, man. You guys, you guys claim to know the scriptures, but you don't know, you don't know nothing, man. You'll you'll, you'll start to quote John three sixteen, and you'll never get past for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. He, you don't know nothing after that. Okay, I'm going to read the scripture real quick. Um, I'm going to start up at 15, actually. It's John chapter 3, verse 15. It says, that who, yeah, it says, That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For the Most High God, Yahweh, which is his real, the real name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai being the name of his only begotten Son, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Okay? It says, um, for God, 
so love the world, and when you look, you gotta go into these other languages. I'm sure brothers has been doing this with this John three sixteen. That word there is cosmos. Okay, it's a Greek word for cosmos, and the other word for the whole inhabitants of the world or the actual world at large, the planet Earth, is oikomene. Okay, the difference you gotta look up and see what those words are there, because like it says in the apocrypha, in the, in the, in the true um in the, in the prologue to Sirach. It said the words have a deeper, um, you get a deeper meaning. They have the, uh, more force in their original languages, okay? It says uh, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For the Most High God sent not his son to uh, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that's the same world. Not to condemn Israel. By, by being the only perfect one and nobody else was perfect everybody else had sin and the only ones that can sin are the Israelites okay because they're the only ones that the law was given it said to to whom the law was given to them is much required okay yeah to not sin but we couldn't keep it perfectly no one on earth has kept it perfectly except for Yahweh Shai okay he wouldn't be perfect he wouldn't he wouldn't have a uh, perfect purpose unless he was the only one to keep it perfectly, all right? And like they say, you break one, you break them all, all right? It says, um, but that through the world that he might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh. okay? It's all about Yahweh Shai. Now, the point that I want to get to is, um, let me see. I'm going to go to the one right here first in the book of Micah. Because you guys all of a sudden believe, uh, not Micah, it's like I mean, uh, Malachi. You guys all of a sudden believe, uh, it's just like you you Christians, you, you think, oh, God didn't uh, doesn't want us to sin. He said we shouldn't eat pork and catfish, but then when the, when the Lord comes into the world, oh, it's okay now. It's okay to sin now. You know, like like these things that were sins in the ancient world, now all of a sudden they're not sins because, the, you know, the Lord came and, and died for us on the cross. That's not how the process works. Okay, the process is, he when he came, wait, matter of fact, I got to get it. I'm not going to just talk about it. Let me get it. Romans uh, chapter 3, verse 31. It says, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. So we don't throw the law out. What law? The laws of Moses. Okay? We keep those laws. Alright? Okay. Uh, let me see. Um, yep, Romans chapter 6 and 1. Shall we then, what, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Because we have grace, there's no sin, right? Oh, God, God's grace has saved me. No. It says, God forbid. How shall, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Okay. Verse 15. It says, What then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Okay. We're not supposed to be sinning just because we're under grace or we're under faith now. We're not under the um, the, 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 the full measure of the law. But we, we do establish the law okay so we got to keep the laws it was never it's just the law don't kill you you just get it you just get this grace period to get it right you got to be showing your, 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 your diligence to get it right you, you got to be rehearsing the righteous acts to get it right when you go into um uh, judges the, the fifth chapter 11th verse okay we rehearse the righteous acts okay now let me get back to this uh, malachi chapter uh three Verse 6, it says, For I am the Lord Yahweh, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. What does that mean? I'm not going to change and, 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 and start uh, take on a new people. I'm not going to change and say it's okay that you don't keep the law. No, you're supposed to still keep the law. You're still supposed to, uh, to, to follow my commandments, okay? Just because... I've, I've, I've given you a grace period doesn't mean that you, you ain't supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Just because I'm not standing over you, cracking the whip on you every time, 
your boss doesn't mean that the job isn't supposed to be performed. You still got to work, whether I'm paying attention or not. And, and, and Yahweh Shai had parables on that. Okay? But I want to go, well, let me get the one in Hebrews real quick, just to, just to, so for you say, oh, it's, it's, that's Old Testament. No, we don't want to hear that. We got it. It's in the New Testament as well. Um, Because we all know that the Lord came to, to, to push the word of his father. He says that in the book of John, okay? Uh, Hebrews 13, chapter 8, I mean, chapter 13, verse 8, it says, um, what is that? It says, yeah, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, the same yesterday and today and forever, okay? Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have occupied their rent. Okay, and that's going into something uh, uh, deeper, but but he doesn't change. That's the, that, that, that goes right with that. But the point I want to get to is in Hosea. The book of Hosea. That falling away first that I read in 2 Thessalonians, this is what, what, what was the prophecy of it right here. This is a Hosea chapter um, chapter 1. And I'm going to start up at, uh, at verse I'm going to start at verse 9. I'm going to start there. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 6. It says, and she conceived and bare a daughter. Hold on. It says, and she conceived and bare a daughter. Because the Lord told, um, matter of fact, Verse 2, just so you understand. In the beginning of the word of the Lord of by Hosea, and the Lord Yahweh to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land has committed great whoredom. Depart from the Lord. Departing from the Lord. That's talking about the children of Israel. So he's going to play out the scenario with Hosea and his harlot uh, wife and their harlot children, uh, or whoredom, uh, children of whoredoms. Okay, as likened unto the situation with him in, in Israel. All right, and he says, uh, verse six. I'm gonna jump down. Verse six. And she conceived again, and bare a daughter. Um, matter of fact, I gotta I gotta stop it for. And the Lord Yahweh said unto him, Call his name uh, Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Je Jehu. And will cause the, to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Jezreel, I believe, is firstborn, and that's his first his first uh, born people. That's that's his uh, the Israelites. Okay, it will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Verse six, and she conceived again, or, or seed of power, I believe it's called Jezreel. It says, uh, and she conceived again and bare a daughter, and said unto him, Call her name Laruhamah. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy on the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their power and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. But he's going to do it with Yahweh Shai, not by an army, uh, but through Yahweh Shai. And how do you get saved by Yahweh Shai? Because the two thirds are still going to die. Okay, and Yahweh Shai is going to kill him, but he's going to preserve the nation through the elect by Yahweh Shai. All right, it says, um, verse 9 it says, Then said the Most High God, Call his name that she conceived again. It said, Call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your power or your God. All right, so this is what he was, that's the following away that we that we go through. That we've, that we've been through now, where that we're still into right now. But now, the dry, as, as dry bones, we're starting to come back. All right? We're coming back to Yahweh. Okay? Through Yahweh Shai. And, and how? First off, through the, through the knowledge, wisdom, and power of this bullet, of this uh, book, of the Bible, through the Holy Spirit. Okay? Harakakwadash. Okay? That's how we get there. That's how we get to, to, the, to the Most High God. All right? That's the way it works. 
Uh, so I'm going to read verse 10, and I'm, I guess i got to go and close out. So it says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be at the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And that's true. You, you look at uh, North, Central, and South America, plenty of Israelites, and then you the ones that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, confusion of faces, Israelites are everywhere. You just got to look into their spirit and see and see that, that, that spirit of an Israelite. Now, two-thirds of those people are wicked as hell man you can't tell between them and the heathen or them and the damn devil themselves whether they got dark skin whether they got red skin so-called white man or they look like another heathen nation you know but their spirit really does go back to the israelites for those confusion of faces all right it says and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them you are not my people there shall be said unto them ye are the sons of the living power Okay, then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be appointed together, I mean, excuse me, be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. Who's that one head? Yahweh Shai. Okay, so, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. And that's when the children of Israel come back. And if I got to cut it short, but I want to go into the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Talking about the, um, the valley of the dry bones, all right. When the, when, the, when the sinews come upon those bones, and when the breath of life comes into those to those men, because right now uh, the bones are coming back together, the sinews and, and, the, and the ligaments and all of that's coming back together, pulling the body back together. True enough, a lot of people know they're Israel, but only the ones that that breath of life is coming back into. And what's the breath of life? The knowledge and wisdom and understanding of this Bible that's making us really go back into being the true Israelites. Okay. Those that get that breath of life will be will be the um, the elect. All right. So I gotta close out, giving all praise and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahushai, by Hashem, Arakakwadash. So lucky for cutting it off short. You know, I got I gotta get to the uh, to the plantation right now. But uh, double honor to the elder apostles at Great Millstone who rule well, and green salutations and blessings unto the hopeful elect. Shalom.